Hi guys, um, today's sermon is called Do the Work. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I give you praise and we worship God. You are, you are to be praised and you are to be worshipped and you are to be adored. As we dive in today, Lord Jesus, just be with us in a marked and special way. Speak to me, speak through me, speak to every heart. Speak something different to us all, all at the same time. Speak to me, speak through me, in the name of Jesus, amen. Hi guys, today's sermon is called Do the Work. Um, thanks guys for being with me and, um, sticking with me these past years. I, I really appreciate it. Without you and your views and your love, I wouldn't do what I, I'm doing now, so I really appreciate it. Um, I was thinking about uh, this sermon from Tuesday night. The t- the title came to me about Tuesday night. Um, uh, do the work. Um, which uh, I got from Ian LeVanzette because she always used to say at the end of her program, Fix your life. Do your work. Um, which means to work on yourself and uh, do 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 the hard stuff that so you can get to healing and to the other side. And the Lord said, "I want you to talk about doing your work." doing the work. Um, I was just going to talk about the spiritual work and the uh, uh, the spirit work and the soulish work, um, but coming out of today, I'm going to talk about all three. I'm going to talk about doing the physical work, doing the emotion, doing the spiritual work, and then doing the soul work. Um, first of all, doing the physical work. Uh, today, um, I was getting up this morning, and I was having an interesting conversation about um, taking care of your bodies and making sure you get the right tests done and what ages you should start thinking about all this. And um, I was thinking, as as the ladies were talking around me, I was thinking, wow, I need to get most of this stuff done. <laughs> and tests, physical testing for people with disabilities is so lacking. The, the right kind of equipment and the right kind of help for people with disabilities is most times not available. So most times we can't get the test done because the proper lifts are not available. The proper information is not available. I know for one particular test, for me, I've asked every doctor that I've had um because I go to a medical clinic for people people with disabilities and seniors, and I've asked every doctor that I have, should I get this test done? And I've gotten so many answers. Uh, some doctors say, no, you're too young. Some doctors say, you should wait until... until this certain things ha- happens, and sometimes you just don't know. But I've decided 
I'm going to ask this current doctor that I have now uh, to make an appointment with the nurse so I can get this one test done. It is very important um, to take care of your physical health, to get the right test done, uh, to this morning we talked about uh, the colon test uh, to test to, to screen for colon cat cancer and if you're a woman to get an over 21 to get your pap smear test done uh, these these things are very important because it's about keeping the temple healthy and it's not because uh, the Lord says your body is a temple. And you need to keep the temple healthy. And you may think that there's nothing wrong because it's not in your family. It's not going to happen to me. But the sad reality is, is it can happen to you. It can happen to you. And you just want to be... Um, sure that you're healthy and it doesn't matter if you go to the gym or whatever it doesn't matter if you eat right it doesn't matter if you do everything right stuff can still happen cancers can still appear things can still happen so get those tests done if you're 40 and above Um, you need to really be thinking about getting, uh, if you're a woman, your, your, uh, breast test done, um, a, um, if you're a man, um, um, your, uh, the test for, some of the male cancers like prostate cancer and uh, testicular cancer, getting that done. All of this is stuff we need to think about because early detection, I'm not a doctor by, by the way, but early detection is key. And I know for years, for me, fear has stopped me from uh, getting it done, the fear of what if I have it, what do I do, and whatever. But I can't let fear stop me anymore because it is it is very important that I make sure I'm healthy. And so the same thing goes for you. If you're over over forty, you. You need to be um, diligent about your health, not not just about eating and whatever. That stuff too. Uh, limiting diet and exercise and movement. And God knows I need to work on this stuff too. But also getting the proper screenings, getting uh, getting. Um, your colon cancer screening, your breast cancer screening, your prostate exam, uh, whatever you need to do to to keep yourself healthy. And your pap smear, if you're a woman, every three years. And these are all things we need to think about in regards to our physical health. And in regards to keeping the temple healthy, because uh, the Lord says our bodies are the temple of the living God. So the next, my next appointment, I will ask about these tests for myself because I want to make sure that I'm healthy and I'm on track with my health. Because I want to be around for a long time. And this is going to be um, 
a part of keeping myself healthy. So if you need to do a test, get it done. If you're 40 and above, ask. If you're even not sure of the test you need to do, just ask your doctor to say, hey, I'm 40. Are there any tests that I need to think about doing or any or any shots that I need to get anything that I need to do to get my health up to date? And some doctors are really good and some doctors are not good. If you have a feeling that your doctor is not good, get a second opinion. Because I've I've had questions about this test for years and and I've just gotten different actor answers every test for every do- doctor, but this year I'm going to totally insist on this test for myself. Because I want to make sure that I'm healthy and around for a long time. So that is um, your physical health. And then I'm going to talk about your your uh, your soul um, your soulish health. The soul is made up of um, traditionally. It's made up of three parts, your mind, your will, and your emotions. So, um, just like I talked about checking in about your physical health, it is paramount that you check on the health of your soul, which means your mental health, your your emotional health and the health of your will. So your mental health is basically meaning the health of your mind. Is your mind healthy? Are your thoughts on the right on the right track? And Basically, for this, what I do, I'm not a doctor, but basically what I do is check is check to see if my thoughts are lining up with God's thoughts, or my it, it, is my thinking the way God would have me think, or Am I letting external or internal circumstances come into my thought life? We need a healthy thought life because before any action, we need a healthy thought life, which means we need to think the way God thinks about us. And sometimes... Most times before we perform an action, there needs to be thought that goes along with those actions. So some most times before we make mistakes and everything, we have to think about we 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 have thoughts that that lead us to make those mistakes. And we make decisions because of our thoughts. And that's what leads us into trouble. So we we have to have a healthy thought life. And secondly, our emotions. Along with our thoughts, we need to check in with our emotions. How, how is this making me feel? And we say, 
we say the misnomer. It doesn't matter how we feel. We just put you our feelings and all that stuff. And I'm learning that no, you can't just push through your feelings and forget about them. You need to assess how you're feeling and why you're feeling this way and deal with those feelings. You can't just push through these feelings and and just, oh, they don't matter. They're just feeling just push through your feelings. I've 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 said that before and I've um I'm not afraid, afraid to say that I was wrong. You don't just push through your feelings. You assess your feelings. You figure out why you're feeling this way and what is the root cause of this and you deal with that root cause. Now, this could be by yourself, sitting with the Lord, sitting with you and whatever. This could be in a group, either a therapy group or just a group of your friends. Or this could be with a therapist, um, someone professional to help you assess why you're feeling what you're feeling. The job of a therapist is not to tell you um, why. It's to give you to give you the tools to assess why you're feeling what you're fe- what you're feeling. Because I think if you push it through your feelings and ignore those feelings. Um, you, they will eat you alive, but, but really, I believe that you have to take out your feelings, examine them, work through them, and then you can, you can have a better understanding of why you're feeling this way, and you can, um, Gather better tools to deal with what you're feel- what you're feeling. Um, t- to deal with your emotional health. You know, a lot of people are mentally healthy, but they're not emotionally healthy. Um, they're mentally healthy, but their emotions are sick. Because they haven't dealt with pain. And they think putting it off is just going to make it better. Just like I said about the doctor earlier. Putting it off, not getting tested, is not going to prevent you from getting cancer. And putting off your emotions emotions is not going to stop you from getting cancer. You have to deal with with what's going on inside, I know it might, might be scary, but you're woman enough, you're man enough to handle what is what is going on there. And if you need to to read books, if you need to go to therapy, if you need to whatever, it's worth it to get emotionally healthy, you're, you're important, you're important enough to be emotionally healthy, and you need to be emotionally healthy for yourself and for your family. The Lord says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. And when he says health, He means all around health. He means physical health. He means emotional health. And he needs, and he means spiritual health. So next, I'm going to talk about the, the will, which is part of the soul. 
Soul is the mind, will, and emotions. So I talked about the mind, which means your thoughts. I talked about the emotions, which is how you're feeling. And the will, is is your will healthy? What I mean by is your will healthy, I mean um, is you, is what you want to do, your will, lining up with what God, with his will. The, the point is not to just ignore that the will is there. Not to just say, it's not my will, but it's thy will. No, no, yes, it is. But... When Jesus said that, what he meant by saying that is he didn't say, he didn't mean that my will is not important. It me, For me, it means uh, I have to line up my will with your will. Do our wills, what we will do, and what we won't do, do they align together? So I I don't think the will is not important. I just think it takes lining up your will with God's will. And do our wills align together? Uh, it's it's getting into to will alignment with God because the will gives you kind of a, a extra boost to say I will do this I will do that but if it's your will it's not str- if it's just your will I should say it's not strong enough because you can't do it in your own strength. But if it's your will lined up with his will, then you're then you will do everything that he wants you to do. So it's not about throwing away your will. It's Lord line up my will with your will. So we can go together and be great together. We can, our wills can partner and it'll strengthen your faith too if you, if you can line up your will with his will. And sometimes it will be a fight because your initial will may be different than his will. And that's okay, but in time, he will give you tools to line up his will with your will. So your will and his will in a certain circumstance will be the same. They won't always be the same. But if you say, Lord, line my will up with your will, he will eventually do that. And it may be a fight, but the fight will be worth it. The fight will be worth it. It'll be a battle of wills. But when your will aligns, you'll be unstoppable for for what he wants for your life. So it's more like, let me want what you want for me. Show me what you want for me. Let our wills align together so we can... So together, you can give me strength. And I can, I can have the faith to achieve what you want.
So I talked about the the body. I talked about the soul. But I'm going to now talk about the spirit. The spirit is basically your connection with God. And when I talk about your connection with God, I'm talking about um, your relationship with God. Um, a lot of times when we, ate, when we ask Jesus in our heart initially, we think that's it. We say we pray and whatever. But it, we don't do the maintenance. So I'm asking you today to do spiritual maintenance. To check in and be honest with yourself about where you are when it comes to your spiritual health. To your relationship with God. To your connection with God. Because the, the Lord is a spirit, and your connectivity to that spirit will, will help you throughout your whole life. And, I'm not, I'm, and there's been a misnomer that if I ask the Lord into my life, he's in there, I don't need to do anything else. But... Like any relationship, your spiritual health is dependent on having the right relationship with God. And because if you keep that spiritual maintenance up, it will guide you. The, the Holy Spirit will guide you, will help you make decisions, will be with you in whatever you need to do, will, you can run to him if you need someone to run to, you can share with him when you need, you know, whatever you need. It can be found in him, but I think a lack of a lot of Christians have a lack of spiritual maintenance going on, and like maintenance is is like a tune up, you know, a check in. You know, a lot of married people have date night. Because they just want to keep that relationship fresh, so they uh, they take uh, they take time away from their kids and just to spend some time with each other to keep those fires burning. The same thing we have to do in our relationship with God. We need to spend time with Him uh, and. The more time you spend with him, the stronger your spiritual senses will be. And it will help you through every decision of your life. Which is like, whether you're picking a house, whether you're picking your friends, whatever decisions you need to make. He wants to walk with you throughout your life. He wants to be with you throughout your life. A lot of Christians uh, don't know what to do and they fumble through life because they don't have, they have, they have, they, they have Jesus in their lives, but he's not Lord of their lives. He's not the center of their life. Like, I read the, the book The Shack a few years ago, and that book was awesome. And one of the things that William P. Young said was, 
God is not first. He's the center. And I've adopted that. Like, everything I do in my life revolves around the spirit. And my and my spiritual senses are always in tune. Not always, but most of the time in tune uh, with what God has me to do. Not because I'm perfect or whatever, but because I'm in daily communication with him. He's speaking to me. I know when the Spirit is speaking to me. I know when that's happening because we have a relationship. I'm one of his sheep. And he says, my sheep know my voice. So how you hear the Lord is is t- time and intense relational stuff and how you hear the Lord how you know it's the Lord is different for every person that's why each person needs a personal relationship with God because the way I hear God is not the way you hear God and how God speaks to me is not how God speaks to you and the way God guides me is not how God guides you and you could I've heard a lot of people say uh, just read the word and pray and that's a relationship with God no no that's the beginning that's the starting point but when you talk about relationship the root word of relationship is to relate so God wants to relate with you in all your life that's what a relationship is a relationship whether it be a friendship a romantic relationship whatever kind of relationship co-workers you you A relationship means to relate to another person. It's to be like-minded, like a co-worker relationship is a like-minded relationship when it comes to work. A friendship is like I relate to you and you relate to me as a friend. We are like-minded when we when it comes to our values or what we believe, what we stand for. We're like-minded in our friendship. A romantic relationship means like I relate to you on a romantic level, whether it be a sexual level or whether it be just talking to you, whether it be sharing stuff with you. We can relate together. So you cannot have a relationship with someone that you cannot relate to. You cannot have a friend a friendship with someone that you cannot r- relate to. Because that's a relationship. And All of these relationships are with people that you can relate to on one level or or another. Relationship means that you have to relate to the person on one level or another. So if you're not relating to a person that you're you're in uh, close proximity to and you're in a relationship, I would, I would caution you I, that that's not a relationship. You're just in close proximity to that person. 
we're not in a relationship. We're we're maybe just in close proximity to each uh, each other, and we hang it out. We hang out, and we go to movies together, and we talk together. But but we're not relating to each other. So relationship means to relate, to have like minds, to have sameness of of mind. It's not that you that you think everything the same or whatever. No, no, no. It's that when it comes to the core of this relationship, regardless of all the little things, our core beliefs in this relationship is the same. And every relationship and the level of uh, relativity and connectivity is different. So a co-worker relationship is different than a romantic relationship. A romantic relationship is different than a friendship because we relate on a different level. So, yes, so, um, so the Lord wants to relate with you. He just doesn't want to be Someone you pray to when you're in trouble. He wa- he wants to be in your business. He wants to be in every area of, of your life. And I heard somebody say God doesn't care about the little things of your life or whatever. But what I've learned in my life, no offense to that person, but what I've learned in my life is he wants to relate with Everything in my life. He wants to be a part of whatever Netflix movie I'm watching, whatever I'm reading, whatever I'm thinking. He wants to relate to me on every level of my life. And yes, that's what he's taught me. And, um,. I th- I think um I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking of uh they say um a person can't complete you, they can only compliment you. But I was thinking on this level of relationship there are different levels to relationship as I was saying. So you could be incomplete on one level and complete on another level. So, so basically, for me, this is only my opinion. Uh, you can be incomplete on the like. I'm. I'm. Um. I don't have any grandparents, so I'm incomplete on the grandparent level, but I do have parents, so I'm complete on the parent level. So when you say that no one can complete you, they can just compliment you. And God completes you on every level. God hasn't designed himself to complete you on every level. If that was the case, he would say, you don't need anyone, you just need me. But what it is, is yes, you're incomplete on one level, but I think we need to differentiate completeness with brokenness. See, you in completeness with brokenness. When I say 
I'm incomplete on the spouse level because I don't have a husband, it doesn't mean that I'm broken. I'm not broken on the spouse level. Incomplete on the spouse level just means I don't have a spouse. And until he brings one to me, he will give me tools to function on that level until he brings me a spouse. Like, I don't need to say that, oh, like, only God completes me. No, he's not designed himself to complete us on every level. He's designed himself with what when we when we say we're complete in Christ it means that on the level of spirit to spirit we are complete there's nothing that we need on a spiritual level that Christ can't provide and and th- but there are things and on an emotional level that he can provide that he does provide but there are things on an emotional level that he will not provide and there are things on a physical level that he can provide and there are things on a physical level that he cannot provide. He cannot come down and hug you and kiss you and, you know, um, have sexual contact with you. He's not designed to do that. He's designed people to do to do that. And because we need to uh, differentiate, as I said, incompleteness with brokenness. God has not designed you to be broken, but for a time you can be incomplete on a level. Just like I said, I have no grandparents left. They all they all want to be with the Lord, so I'm incomplete on that level. But I'm not broken. I'm not broken. I'm not... I'm not feeling like I'm going to die because I don't have that grandparent. And the the thing is, when when you feel that a romantic relationship is going to make you not broken. That's that that's a problem, because if you're broken um, without a relationship, that means you need a man to fix you or whatever. No, no, no. You don't need anyone to fix you. No one can fix you, but you and the Lord. He can fix you on that level. But being incomplete now, you can be incomplete on that level and not broken. See, being incomplete just means you don't have um, a particular person to satisfy that level. But being broken means you're, you're... you're broken and you're in pieces and no one can fix you. No one can com- no one can mend your brokenness except God. And even in a relationship, if you are broken in a relationship, that person won't be able to fix you. That person will make it worse if you're broken in a relationship. If you're broken 
and on a relational level, that person will make it worse because you'll make their life miserable and it will be just two miserable people. So being incomplete on a level is not the same as being broken on a level. If you're broken, you need to figure out what's going on in there and fix that up. And then you can bring somebody along healthy and secure. But then you have a lot of broken people in a relationship and a person cannot fix you. A person will never be able to fix you. So you go from guy to guy, girl to girl, partner to partner, looking for someone to complete looking for someone to fix your brokenness and like I need someone to complete me no you need someone to fix you and no human person is designed to fix another person you can support a person you can be there but you're not desi- you're not God only God is designed to fix a person. And that will take self-reflection and therapy and help and all of that to be to be fit. Because there, there are so many broken people who think a relationship will fix them. No, a relationship can complete you on a level if you're healthy but it will not fix you if you're broken. It will only make it worse because broken people um, will spread it to the other person and it will be a disaster for the other person because you'll transfer your brokenness and God forbid if you get married and have kids They'll be broken as well, and you'll be, um, you'll be spreading that brokenness to your kids, and God can heal that generational bloodline, but you have to admit that you're not incomplete, you're broken, and you have to be fixed, and you can only be fixed by yourself. And God and getting the right tools. So being incomplete on a level for a time is okay. Because God will give you the tools to deal with incompleteness on that level. So I don't I don't have a romantic partner, but on that level, God has given me tools to deal with that. Like, for me, this is only my personal tool. He he hasn't said no, just not now. And he shows me images, just, and he shows me even now things I need to work on uh, to become a wife and things I need to work on to become a better person. That's that's the thing about singleness. Singleness gives you an opportunity to work on yourself, to get to know yourself. So when that person comes along, you're a whole person. You're a whole person, and that other person is a whole person. And together you just make something greater. That's what singleness is for. Okay, guys. See you later. Bye. Hope hope you enjoyed my sermon today. I totally enjoyed doing it. It was awesome. I hope one, at least one thing I said helps. 
Thank you so much. Bye, guys.